Good morning, everyone. It's the um, first session of the KSELS Congress 2020 Virtual Congress. Uh, thank you for your joining and watching the Virtual Online Congress. I, let me introduce myself. I am Jaesop Min from Busan, Korea. And I am one of the chairs of this session, first session. And Professor Song, Kyo Young Song in Catholic University will attend as soon as possible. And please greet our participants. And before starting the first lecture, I'd like to introduce our speakers. And uh, in this first session, four speakers will talk to us about the uh, laparoscopic endoscopic cooperative, cooperative surgery, which is a lax for gas neoplasm. The first speaker is uh, Yuming Kim and uh, from Yonsei University College of Medicine. And the uh, second presenter is Professor Sangwo Jung from Gyeongsang National University. And third presenter is Dr. Bang Wo Ong from National Cancer Center Korea. And the last presenter is Sun Gyo Lim from Aju University School of Medicine. So please enjoy our their four lectures. And after all lectures present presentation, we will have a Q&A time with our two speakers, who is um, from Sang Woo Jung, the second speaker, and the third speaker, the Dr. Bang Woo Um. And please feel free to ask our speakers your question by clicking question button at the right side of the screen or via the chat window. Thank you for your participation. For giving me this great opportunity. I'm Yumin Kim. I'm working in the Department of Surgery of uh, Yonsei University College of Medicine. In this presentation, I would like to present you about what is LEX, is it necessary for us? What is LEX? LEX, laparoscopic endoscopic cooperative surgery is now performed worldwide as a result of the invention of new operative techniques. To put it briefly, it consists of two things, theromuscular resection by laparoscopic for local resection of a visceral organ, endoscopic dissection of the mucosa to the submucosa layer, determining the appropriate incision lines and resects the tumor and closes the visceral wall defect. Various minimally invasive lex techniques are now well established. Lex associated techniques adaptation of them and challenges for the future in gastric neoplasm field are reviewed by other presenter in these sessions. There are several terms about LEX. LEX approaches are grouped into three major categories. First one is laparoscopy assisted endoscopic resection LAER in which resection is performed primarily by the endoscopic teams under laparoscopic control. The second one is endoscopy-assisted laparoscopic resection, EALR, where the laparoscopic teams perform the resection under endoscopic monitoring. The third one is CLEAR. It is combined laparoscopic-endoscopic resection, which is performed by laparoscopic and the endoscopic teams. There are two major techniques for non-exposed tumor resection in CLEAR. One is NUS, non-exposed endoscopic wall inversion surgery, and the other one is CLEANET, a combination of laparoscopic endoscopic approaches to neoplasia with a non-exposed technique. And is it necessary for us? Most gastric tumors, like early gastric cancers or submucosal tumors, are recognized intraluminally on the mucosal side. And these tumors sometimes cannot be recognized from the outside of the stomach. As a result, it is difficult to determine precise resection lines for gastric intraluminal tumors during performing the conventional laparoscopic wedge resections from outside of the stomach. 
this excessive and inappropriate resection may lead to the post-operative deformity of stomach with gastric stasis, or post-operative positive resection margins will cause the post-operative local recurrence. So a precise resection and luminal endoscopic observation from the mucosal side is important for the safe local resection of tumors in the stomach without complication. In that sense, interest in legs is bound to increase. Various lex techniques for GIST are recently established, and the application of these approaches to early stage gastric cancer, which is difficult, is uh, to resect with the ESD technique because of severe scars or ulcers is described. Legs for other organs such as the duodenum and colorectum is also being attempted, but only with expert techniques and specialist languages. Legs plus sentinel lymph node navigation surgery for oral gastric cancer is ongoing as a clinical trial. Let's take a closer look at the CLEAR method that is most commonly implemented among legs and it is most stable for the actual legs definition. Dr. Hickey first reported classic legs in 2006 for local resection of GIST to prevent excessive gastric resection followed by transformation stenosis or gastric stasis after the surgery. In classic Lex, uh, the incision line is determined by endoscopist and the artificial perforation is performed by endoscopy and the seromuscular layer is dissected using laparoscopic devices under laparoscope. The gastric wall defect is closed with laparoscopic stapling devices. This early version techniques of lex is called classical lex. Uh, newly developed uh, techniques first reported by Dr. Hickey in 2006 for local resection of GIST. So the first version, uh, this procedure is further categorized into CLEAR, distinguished it from subsequent modified LEX techniques. Uh, it is involved uh, whole layer resections using laparoscopy and endoscopy. This method of LEX can minimize the resected region and preserve the function of stomach after surgery. The procedure was added to the national insurance list in Japan to, in 2014 and subsequently rapidly diffused throughout the surgical community. But this technique may lead to contamination and seeding of tumor cells into the peritoneal cavity especially when the tumor is associated with an ulcer or an epithelial lesion. So far, further application of LEX, the modified method was then developed to prevent peritoneal spread. Uh, so modified LEX procedure now include inverted LEX with the crown method, um, NEWS, and CLINIC. This slide is about inverted legs with the crown method. By pulling up the incision line of the stomach with several stitches, the abdominal cavity contamination is prevented. This technique was named crown method because pulled up stomach wall looks like a crown. Using the traction of the sutures, the resected specimen is inverted into the intragastric cavity. This method is very useful for preventing tumor sitting into the peritoneal cavity for securing the visual field during the operation. But this inverted lex with crown method has few limitations such as tumor size or tumor location in comparison with news or clinic technique. Classical lex with the crown method is an improved technique that reduced the risk of cancer cell dissemination, but it can be difficult to completely prevent the contamination because of transmural communication during the procedures. 
non-exposed endoscopic wall inversion surgery news was first reported by Goto in 2011 with the goal of minimizing transmural communications during the operation. They performed the news in an ex vivo porcelain model and described the usefulness of these procedures. By inverting the tumor into the inside of the stomach without opening the gastric lumen, complete resection with non-exposure was achieved. I think the detailed method will be done by the later presenter, so I will omit it. Dr. Goto reported news technique for three lesions, one anterior lesion, one lesser curvature lesion, and one posterior wall lesion of the gastric body using porcelain stomach. And complete resection was achieved for all lesions safely and without perforation or air leakage. However, there is a limit of a removable tumor size because the resected tumor is removed through the pharynx by the endoscope. So solid tumor such as gist over 3 cm is thought to be the difficult to retrieve. Next is about the clinic. A combination of laparoscopic endoscopic approaches to neoplasia with a non-exposure technique clinic was first reported by Dr. Inoue. This procedure also involves a non-exposure techniques like NUS, but with a difference. By preserving the continuity of the mucosa, the mucosa works as a barrier, a clinic, to prevent abdominal cavity contamination and seeding of tumor cells into the peritoneal cavity. The specimen is lifted from the peritoneal cavity so it is retrieved laparoscopically. The clinic procedure is unique, easy to perform relatively, and attractive non-exposure techniques for full thickness resection of the stomach wall. But if the tumor is located at the cardia or posterior wall of the upper one third of the stomach, clinic might be difficult to apply. Also in these procedures, the incision line is finally determined from the serosa side. Therefore, the compared to the other modified legs procedures, the appropriate resection line might be difficult to determine, especially for epithelial neoplasm such as gastric cancer. As already mentioned, Lex has been safely applied to patients with gastric submucosal tumors but modified legs procedure, for example, inverted legs, news, clinets, or closed legs, were developed mainly for gastric epithelial neoplasms. Currently, modified legs procedure can be used in patients with early gastric cancer that would be technically difficult to treat with endoscopic mucosal resections as long as the tumor is within the indication for EMR ESD. But if the EMR ESD is not indicated for the tumor, if the sentinel nodes are confirmed to be negative for cancer metastasis, then unnecessary lymph node dissection may be avoided. Sentinel node navigation surgery for gastric cancer has been validated in a prospective multicenter trial. And in addition, a prospective multicenter trial has commenced to compare personalized gastrectomy with conventional distal total gastrectomy based on the intraoperative sentinel node navigation surgery. When modified legs procedure and sentinel node navigation surgery are performed together after the sentinel node navigation surgery safety confirmation, a minimally invasive surgical technique for adequate radical oncological resection of early gastric cancer could be achieved. This is my video of robotic EFTGR with clean and method for early gastric cancer after sentinel load navigation surgery for clinical trial. Serosa marking under endoscopy was done. 
The seromuscular dissection is performed laparoscopically along the outside of the marking. The full layer specimen is lifted and the mucosa surrounding the full layer specimen is also pulled up. The continuity of the mucosa layer prevents the gastric contents from following out into the peritoneal cavity. Using a, a laparoscopic stapling devices, the full layer specimen is dissected in, with enough surgical margin. I was performed by Da Vinci Robot System and Tylepro program. This program is built into the robot systems. Watching the operation period and the endoscopic image at the same time, since surgery can be performed, the advantage is that the margin can be accurately checked. In summary, the LEX concept was initially developed from the classical LEX procedures for the gastric submucosal tumors. The limitation of classical LEX, namely the risk of abdominal infections and seeding of tumor cells into the abdominal cavity and peritoneum, has been almost resolved by the modified LEX procedure. However, if the following equipments are developed, more commercialized, further advances of LEX procedure is expected in the future. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sang Ho Jung from Gyeongsang National University. I will talk about LEX procedure with various approach. I'll talk follows. Uh, talk about first a uh, LEX procedure defined. Uh, it will fast, fast because uh, Professor Kim previous lecture talk detailed, and uh, uh, I'll talk LEX for benign tumor about seven approach method and LEX for mainly malignant tumor was the fiber approach and comparison and choice of LEX procedure in each case and take a home message. Lex was previously uh, reported by Professor Hiki in Japan. And this procedure is a uh, several kind of procedure. At first, benign tumor was a uh, classic Lex. It is a uh, ESD plus laparoscopic dissection. Uh, this uh, procedure time is moderate because ESD procedure, however, this is just a precurt and tumor location is anywhere of tumor is uh, possible to resection. So, and however, uh, this procedure have a risk of a split. And, um, yes, next is uh, LAER, laparoscopic assisted endoscopic resection. Uh, actually, it is a uh, ESD plus laparoscopic assist or, or laparoscopic guide. So ESD procedure, so it is time consuming procedure. And uh, nowadays it, ESD is uh, performing everywhere in tumor in the stomach. So smaller is uh, better. However, there is no split risk because uh, no operation ex actually this procedure. And EAWR is uh, endoscopy assisted laparoscopic wedge resection. So mostly performing wedge resection was uh, this procedure. So laparoscopic resection mostly by a uh, stapling method. So uh, it is uh, faster. And uh, however, this procedure is a uh, uh, tumor is. Uh, when resection of a wedge resection, normal uh, stomach wall also uh, folding and resected. So uh, it is difficult to uh, procedure in the easy junction or pylori area mass. So body area is better. And this method has a no spillage risk. Endoscopic assisted laparoscopy Transgastric surgery is EATR is a 
At first, uh, divide uh, gastric wall anterior mostly and uh, resection by laparoscopic wedge uh, resection or integration. So, and then uh, repair by uh, a intragastric uh, resection also repaired and uh, gastric wall also repaired. So it is a little bit moderate procedure time and risk of uh, spilling. So uh, it is not recommended for malignant. And laparoscopic intragastric surgery also uh, reported by procedure time is wrong. Uh, this is uh, uh, mainly laparoscopic resection and uh, endoscopic uh, assist. Uh, this procedure is uh, at first uh, difficult to insert of intragastric broker so it's time consuming and risk of uh, uh, spillage so uh, not recommend for a be beginner laparoscopic surgeon a single incision intragastric resection is uh, uh, for EA endoscopic assist and laparoscopic resection this procedure is a single incision in um, umbilical area and insert a port uh, uh, globe or recently several port is uh, using a uh, single port you can use that and uh, insert of the uh, stomach anterior and directly intragastric resection by uh, stapling uh, this procedure is a uh, minimal spillage risk because uh, this opening is uh, handling by uh, extracorporeal. Uh, however, uh, this spillage risk is uh, small. It is a uh, uh, recommend for tumor upper and posterior because uh, uh, pyloric area is uh, makes a uh, acute anger, so it is uh, difficult to. Uh, insert or stapling or things so they uh, reported a uh, uh, body and fundus or junction is uh, in reported LA EFR is laparoscopy assisted endoscopic post thickness resection this procedure is uh, EFTR plus laparoscopy assist so uh, you can resect anywhere of the tumor However, it is uh, also has a split risk. Let's see the uh, Rex for malignant tumor. Uh, at first, ESD is a uh, plus uh, laparoscopic liberal dissection. This procedure is uh, commonly performing in uh, very uh, 2000 from 2005. ESD plus LND, so uh, this procedure have no split risk. Uh, however, it is an EST procedure, so time consuming. Single incision EST procedure is uh, uh, another method. It is uh, EST plus LND. However, this procedure is uh, faster because uh, uh, laparoscopic EST assisted by uh, laparoscopic uh, instrument. So ESD is uh, faster than uh, classic ESD, and after that, they performing uh, uh, laparoscopic lymphoma dissection. This study was performing uh, our center, and we reported uh, after the surgery, uh, the ESD area is uh, also is uh, healing, and posterior wall is uh, faster than less culture area uh, ESD. Laparoscopy uh, EFR is EFTR plus laparoscopy resection is a uh, Rex inverted. This procedure is uh, for malignant tumor uh, in Professor Hickel reported. So, uh, in mostly a tumor located in upper body. And however, they try to hanging of a stomach in abdominal wall is crown method, however, it has also spillage risk. And another reported uh, 
LAEFR is a hybrid node in front Korea. Uh, EFTR and uh, laparoscopic lymphoma dissection. Another method is MUSE. Uh, MUSE is non exposed endoscopic wall immersion surgery. It's a EFTR plus laparoscopic resection actually. So uh, they uh, insert, uh, inject up the endoscopic injection uh, near a uh, uh, region, and after then, uh, laparoscopic seromuscular dissection. Uh, next step is uh, suture and inversion of the region, and e endoscopic uh, EST is performed. So, this is uh, actually a uh, uh, time consuming procedure and suture and injection, so it is difficult to uh, easily a pilot area. However, there is no spillage risk. Uh, this is uh, pictures and uh, they performing uh, zero muscular dissection by laparoscopy and then suture and inversion the region is uh, resected by endoscope. Next procedure is a clean net. Clean net is a clean non-exposure technique. It is a, a endoscopic assister plus laparoscopic resection. So at first the laparoscopic marking of lesion and uh, injection of the uh, by uh, endoscope and laparoscopic suture and mucosa is uh, fixed to um, a seromuscular area by suturing. After suture, the seromuscular uh, dissection is performed by laparoscopy and then uh, pull the lesion and uh, extraluminal uh, traction. Then they stapling a uh, whole layer. This procedure is uh, uh, with a uh, lymphoma dissection, so uh, it can use in also in malignant disease. However, if you are uh, not stapling in whole layer, if, you, if the region is benign or a small lesion, you can stapling in uh, just mucosa and. Uh, suture of seromuscular by uh, suturing. So you can use anywhere uh, in not only a uh, junction or paro area is possible. Uh, and this procedure also no risk of spillage. Similar in use. However, this procedure is not just more main procedure is laparoscope, so procedure time is faster. Next step is uh, comparison and choice of uh, procedure. Uh, we uh, classified each advantage and disadvantage of each procedure. Uh, let's see the, each characteristic. At first, a uh, faster procedure is, uh, you can see the uh, three procedure is faster than other procedure. Another procedure is a safe procedure, as you can see the same procedure. And faster and safe procedure is, uh, you can see the EA wedge resection and SI ESD and clean net is safe and faster procedure. And uh, another uh, thing is uh, EJ junction area you can approach following several kind of procedure. And if you hospital don't have an uh, expert surgeon or at least to co cooperate and expert endoscopist, you can try for procedure. Endoscopic assisted transgastric section and uh, laparoscopic intragastric resection or single incision intragastric resection or clean net.
this procedure is uh, uh, easy to uh, resection and uh, for easy junction area. Uh, Professor Abe et al. reported a uh, Goring University team reported uh, each algorithm for uh, caustic SMT. They uh, reported uh, this algorithm. Actually, this hospital uh, performing its ESD biosurgeon team, so they uh, first uh, intraluminal growing tumor was ESD procedure is first. Not only uh, uh, some mucosal or muscular, uh, they performing endoscopic muscular dissection at first. And if the um, mass is a uh, penetrated muscular area, they try at first uh, endoscopy EFTR. Uh, and it is a fail, and they try next procedure. However, the mass is anterior and posterior, or they try first the next procedure. It is because uh, uh, anterior posterior lesion not easy to make uh, 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 contain the intraluminal pressure uh, by uh, and during a uh, endoscopic procedure, and the tumor is more than thirty millimeter. Uh, it is recommended by uh, laparoscopic anterior section. Uh, I propose uh, if. The, you know, not easy to uh, um, corroborate the expert endoscopist. A uh, surgeon can uh, adapt uh, laparoscopic intragastric resection or a single incision intragastric resection uh, replaced by EST or EMD or EFTR. You can do that by uh, without uh, expert endoscopist. Take a message. If you are a beginner, uh, it is better to uh, participate in animal lab to make an uh, experience. For patient safety, I uh, recommend a benign tumor is a first, then myelin tumor. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. Today I want to share our experience of the FTR. Our team developed NAS EFTR and tested it in porcine models and then applied it patient step by step. I will share the results and difficulties that we experienced during the trial. As previous speaker presented, last procedure enabled exact tumor location and adequate resection margin. However, it also leads to exposure of tumor to the peritoneum and transmural communication. Use procedure was developed to prevent the tumor spreading and contamination by inversion of stomach wall. In this procedure, caustic full sickness resection is not performed in peritoneal cavity but intragastric space. Our procedure, which is non exposure simple suturing EFTR, namely NAS EFTR is similar with news technique. The different point is that we omitted serial incision and padding and simplified the procedure. This NAS EFTR was developed by Professor Chan Gyu Kim. I just present on behalf of him. Now I will show you the detailed procedure which was performed in animal model. Initially, Artificial mucosal lesion was made by darting with electrocautery by endoscopist. Then endoscopic circumferential incision of mucosal layer around the lesion was performed. Laparoscopic serial marking was then performed and seromuscular suturing was conducted with continuous method using barbar thread. This procedure results in inversion of stomach wall. EFTR of the inverted stomach wall was performed from inside the stomach using IT knife or conventional needle knife. Finally, endoscopic mucosal suturing with end loop was performed. This is the flow of trial. 
planned and performed by Professor Chan Gyu Kim. Initially, the NAS EFTR was performed in four peaks to test the technical feasibility. Then, randomized control study was done, which compared the NAS EFTR to conventional laparoscopic wedge resection. After confirmation of the technical feasibility in porcine model, NAS EFTR was conducted in patients with subepithelial tumor, and then finally to patients with early gastric cancer. I will start with the pyro study in porcine model. We used four female pigs and tested the NAS EFTR technique. After operation, mild diet and normal diet was sequentially provided and antibiotics was administered for five days to prevent wound infection. Euthanasia was performed after two or three weeks and we evaluated the anastomosis site and peritoneal cavity laparoscopically. And then stomach was extracted and examined. This is the video of NAS EFTR. The operator is doing serial marking using electron cautery and serial suturing was performed using continuous bubble thread. The endoscopist confirmed the inverted gastric mucosa and conduct full sequence dissection using an IT knife or conventional needle knife like ESD. Then, endoscopic mucosal suturing was performed using endoclip and endolope. An endolope was positioned along the resection site and 3 to 5 clips fixed to the edges. Two or three endolopes were required for complete mucosal closure. Unblock resection was performed in 100% and total operating time was 137 minutes, 25 minutes for laparoscopic suturing, 31 minutes for EFTR. There was no clinical evidence of illness after surgery and no inflammatory sign in the peritoneum. The resection sites were completely healed in three cases and mucosal ulcer was observed in one case. Therefore, we found NAS EFTR is feasible in animal model. The next step was randomized control trial in the porcine model. We used a total of 16 pigs and randomly allocated to NAS EFTR or laparoscopic wedge dissection. Euthanasia was performed 3 weeks after operation and laparoscopic evaluation and examination of stomach specimen was conducted. In this study, Complete resection was 100% and 75% respectively, and successful closure was performed in all peaks. Procedure time was significantly longer in the NAS EFTR group, which were 118 minutes versus 31 minutes, but there was no early death or complication in the NAS EFTR group. When we reviewed the specimen, the long diameter and circumference was significantly shorter in the NAS EFTR group, which means the precise resection was done by a NAS EFTR. After this, we applied NAS EFTR to patients with subepithelial tumor. From August 2015 to June 2017, 15 patients with gastric SAT were prospectively enrolled. Inclusion criteria was gastric SAT, invasive muscularis propria on EUS, and tumor size less than 5 cm or increasing during follow-up. Any case with suspicious lymph node metastasis was excluded. Among the 15 patients with SAT, 3 patients dropped out due to screening failure and 1 patient withdrew this trial. 11 patients were finally analyzed. This is baseline characteristics and procedure time. Most tumors were located in cardia and fundus, 
and pathologic diagnosis was gist or leiomyoma. Operating time was 189 minutes. Among them, 36 minutes for EFTR, 15 minutes for endoscopic suturing. Complete resection and successful closure rates were 100% and there was no conversion to open case. There was no postoperative complication except one case of focal peritonitis. The patient had acute abdominal pain and fever occurred on POD5. There was a small amount of pneumoperitoneum in lesser sac on CT. However, no leakage or stenosis was observed in endoscopic evaluation. This picture shows the scars of NAS EFTR after 3 months. You can see the scars of NAS EFTR here. To sum up, we found 100% on complete resection and 100% of successful closure and no severe complication after NAS EFTR. This NAS EFTR has theoretical advantage of non exposure methods. But long operating time and technical difficulty is critical disadvantage. Next, NAS ETR was applied to patients with early gas cancer. This is the first trial of NAS ETR for early gas cancer. In this pilot study, we evaluate the feasibility of NAS ETR for early gas cancer and complete resection rate, intraoperative population rate, and complication rate were examined. This is the video. As you can see, early gas cancer is observed in proximal antrum. At first, an endoscopist does mucosal marking around the tumor, about 5 mm or more apart from tumor. And additional dotting is performed to indicate the distal side of tumor. With these additional dots, we can identify direction in the resected specimen. Then the mixture of dye and radioactive agent, which is an indocyanin green and technetium-99, was injected into four sites around the tumor. Proximal, distal, anterior wall, and posterior wall site for sentinel lymph node evaluation. Then, a surgeon examined the sentinel basin and the detected basin is dissected. And this is the dissected sentinel basin tissue. The endoscopist does mucosal incision around tumor and then surgeon does serial marking assisted by the endoscopist. When an endoscopist pressed the mucosal incision line with tip of snare inside stomach, a surgeon marked the pressed spots using a monopolar device outside stomach. Cirrhosal suturing was then performed outside the cirrhosal marking, and gastric mucosal is inverted into gastric lumen. EFTR is performed using IT knife similar with the ESD procedure. Finally, endoscopic suturing was performed using clips and endoloops. 3 to 5 clips fixes the endoloop to the edges. Two or three endoloops were required to complete mucosal closure. This is pathological evaluation of the specimen. You can see the location of tumor and resection margin. This is the endoscopic view at postoperative three months. You can see the scar changes. In this trial, the inclusion criteria was clinical stage T1 and 0. In particular, we limited tumors less than 3 cm for differentiated type cancer and less than 2 cm for undifferentiated type cancer. Among the 20 patients enrolled from 2017 to 2018, one patient was dropped out due to our indication and one patient for sentinel basin positive. 
Then CFTR was successfully done in 17 patients, and one patient underwent Lex procedure due to technical failure of NAS EFTR. This is patient's clinical pathological characteristics. Median tumor size was 16.5 mm, and most cases has undifferentiated type cancer. Complete resection rate was 83%, and three cases had positive tumor margin. But these three positive tumor margin cases occurred in first half period and there was no positive margin case in second half period. Population during EFTR occurred in five cases, cirrhosal suture or cirrhosal suture and endoscopic clipping or laparoscopic stapling was performed for the population site. Regarding post-operative complications, one patient had rupture of mucosal suture inside. The patient had a fever on post-operative day 5. However, neither leakage nor stenosis was observed in EGD. Empirical antibiotics was administrated and fever was subsided. There was no other complications. Total operating time was 264 minutes. Among them, 28 minutes for EFTR and 20 minutes for endoscopic clipping. Median tumor size was 14 mm and appropriate resection margins were obtained. There was no metastatic lymph node. Regarding sentinel basin, there were mostly located in number 3 or number 4D lymph node area. Through this pilot study, we found that complete resection rate was 83% and population occurred in 27%. Actually, NAS EFTR had a long operating time and it needed a running curve for both surgeons and endoscopists. In the last step, currently we are doing a feasibility study of NAS EFTR in patients with early gast cancer. This is a prospective phase 2 study. The objective of this study is to evaluate the feasibility of NAS EFTR in patients with early gast cancer. Primary endpoint was complete resection rate. Planned number of enrollment is 88 patients. We enrolled more than half patients so far. To sum up, we performed two trials in Poussin model and two trials in patients and one trial is ongoing. NAS EFTR has several limitations, which are long operating time, technical difficulties, necessity of experts, and risk of reoperation due to different results between frozen and permanent pathological results. However, it is a real stomach preserving surgery, and patients who underwent NAS EFTR is suspected to recover early. In conclusion, NAS EFTR is a challenging method, but can give functional benefit to patients by preservation of stomach. Thank you for attention. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Sun Lim. I work in Azu University Hospital uh, in located in Seoul, Korea. Uh, I appreciate uh, for giving me opportunity to present the topic. The, Lessons from EFTR trials with sentinel node evaluation for early gas cancer. So I'll start my presentation. Idea procedure for early gas cancer can be suggested as following. The first, the primary tumor should be completely resected with safe vertical and horizontal margins, uh, maintaining the gas passage of food. Second, the range of lymphadenotomy should be uh, minimized without undetected metastatic lymph nodes in order to reduce the, the, the resection range of the soma. And basically, the procedure should be performed using a minimally invasive technique if it is possible. Why should be endoscopy full second resection in early gas cancer with a suspected lymph node metastasis? If three modalities, EFTR, uh, laparoscopic wedge resection, and endoscopic somcoza dissection are compared, there could be summarized as follows. 
evaluation of lymph node is impossible and there is a possibility of basal resection margin positiveness of cancer cell in early uh, endoscopic uh, thrombocytic dissection. And for laparoscopic vessel resection, the securement of adequate surgical margin could be sometimes difficult and the possibility of bulk gastric stenosis or deformity could be higher than other two modalities. In summary, the performance of EFTR in early gas cancer with a suspected lymph node metastasis has a potential of producing best clinical outcomes, outcome, obtaining the adequate oncological safety and prolong the survival rate and improve the quality of life and reducing gastric deformity and functional problems. The clinical application of sentinel node navigation surgery, I talk as SNNS, for early gas cancer has long been debated due to the complicated lymphatic flow, flow uh, around the stomach, and SNNS has not been widely accepted for the treatment of gas cancer. However, recent studies uh, have demonstrated the feasibility of SNNS in early gas cancer. The evaluation of lymph node metastasis in the sentinel node basin, basin is better than that in the sentinel node themselves in gas cancer patients with T1 and 0 and 0, and region measuring less than 4 cm in diameter. In a retrospective analysis for the patient who had uh, undergone uh, endoscopic stomach dissection with laparoscopic sentinel lymph node dissection, abbreviated and uh, ESN, uh, or hybrid nodes for early gas cancer from January 2009 to March 2013. A total of the 40, uh, five, 48 patients, including for 21 undergoing ESN and uh, 27 undergoing hybrid nodes, were enrolled. All patients had cancer stage T1 N0 M0. Uh, only gets cancer less than 5 cm in size and suspected some causal invasion according to imaging or bi biopsy proven diffuse type histology. Uh, in this analysis, uh, the curative resection rate was 76.5% uh, and 9.9% of patients, respectively. Uh, five patients underwent uh, an additional gastrectomy in, in the ESN group. And uh, six patients underwent additional gastrotomy in the hybrid notch group. But in the long term outcomes of approximately 60 months, the local recurrence and metastasis was absent in the hybrid notch group. Therefore, I think that endoscopic full thickness resection with a sentinel node basin dissection based on SNNS has a potential. Uh, to better maintain the balance between quality of life and curability of the fa uh, for patients with early gas cancer. From now, I will show the several EFTR methods developed for the resection of early gas cancer uh, in chronological order. Uh, in 2002, laparoscopic and endoscopic lung view resection method was introduced by a, a German surgery group. There was a laparoscopic vessel resection for gastric tumor located in the gastric anterior wall, anterior wall. Uh, and the laparoscopic intragastral resection for the tumor located in the posterior wall. As you see in this picture, uh, normal tissue around the tumor uh, was dissected too much. This is a laparoscopic intragastric uh, full thickness ex uh, excision mass of the life uh, suggested in the 2007 using animal model. Uh, three trocars were used and the, the T-bar after passing through uh, the abdominal wall uh, is fixed outside of the gastric wall, outside the gastric wall. Trocar is reposition in the stomach uh, by uh, percutaneous transgastric root and the stomach anterior wall is pulled inward by T-bar like this and the lesion, uh, lesion was removed by the several excision with the laparoscopic stapling devices and uh, uh, inserted through the stroker. However, this method has not been advanced uh, the, in the tumor trial. This is a study using laparoscopy assisted EFTR uh, with the sentinel node basin resection in 14 patients. Uh, during this operation, gastric space was exposed 
uh, to the laparoscopic space. The endoscopy resection was done around the three quarters of the tumoral circumference and followed by uh, laparoscopy resection of the remnant margin by harmonic scalpel. This is our study performed in Aju University Hospital between the January 2012 and March 2013. Uh, LAEFTR uh, with basin lymphadenectomy was performed in nine patients with early gas cancer, and the four trochars were located like this figure, and then we began mobilization of the stomach. As soon as the gastroscopy inserted, we identified the, the, the location of a tumor as well as the uh, previous uh, biopsy, the where tumor cells were absent. Uh, for the staining the sentinel load, the lymph node, uh, we injected 5 milliliters of the indocyanin green and into the submuxal layer at 4 points around the tumor. Uh, after the 50 minutes after 50 minutes after the, the injection, uh, the lymphatic range from the primary site where stained lymph node were eventually identified in the laparoscopy view. So we could find out the, the only one basin in all nine patients, and we performed the laparoscopy basin resection, and then we performed uh, confirmed the tumor free. Uh, in all stained lymph nodes harvested from the old patient by interoperative frozen pathology. So we could go to the next step in all patient. Okay. Yeah, before the injection around the tumor, uh, we injected the cell line uh, with epinephrine uh, into the subcell layer to easily perform the gastric incision and to prevent bleeding. Uh, using endoscopic IT knife, uh, we've started to make the incision where we already performed the tumor negative site uh, in preoperative biopsy. The incision was made along the whole resection margin. Uh, okay. Margin, uh, like the typical endoscopy resection. After that, uh, one portion of the round incision was performed. Uh, the, this, uh, Operation uh, was extended into the whole incised margin, protecting the peritoneum and other tissues with gauze. Uh, after half of the margin uh, was uh, resectioned by endoscope, the surgeon can exactly resect the remaining uh, margin uh, the using harmonic scalpel uh, along the uh, with the previous endoscope incision. So after the confirmation of complete resection, we began the laparoscopic closure of the gastric defect. Uh, this defect was sutured in uh, the interrupted double layer fashion um, using the absorbable material. Uh, we did not use the stapler uh, for the closure to reduce the loss of uh, the normal gastric tissue as little as we can. Uh, and the gastric wall was closed uh, in direction perpendicular to the food passage to prevent deformity or narrowing lumen. Uh, after laparoscopic closure of gastric defect, uh, we could per per uh, confirm no bleeding and no narrowing of the lumen by additional uh, interoperative endos endoscopy. In 2011, uh, the, the first model of the non-exposed endoscopic wall inversion surgery was in, uh, developed. Uh, the reason uh, why the, the, this non of the new so the non exposed endoscopic surgery is that uh, uh, in exposed type uh, resection method uh, the, the there are possibility of the tumor cell spillage of the gastric exit spillage that can induce the peritonitis so that's why the the, the development of the non exposed type resection uh, the, so in the news, this method, uh, the markings are made uh, in both the mucosa and in the serosa site, and, and then laparoscopic seromuscular dissection and the sutures were conducted. Finally, the region, the lesion is dissected with the using a conventional endoscopic submucosal dissection technique. However, the laparoscopic circumferential seromuscular incision and the suture 
along the, the incision sites are considered as a deep, very difficult and time-consuming procedure. And the recognition of tumor margin is not always easy. In 2015, the new method, the new method was applied to the patient with early gastric cancer for the first time. The patient was a 55 years old female. The tumor was a two centimeter size diffuse type adenocarcinoma and located in low gastric body and less coverture site. The operation was successful without any complication, but it needed quite a long time, 270 minutes. Uh, this is another the type of the non-exposure type EFTR uh, developed by Chan Gyo King of National Cancer Center in Korea. Uh, the, the point of this method is that uh, laparoscopic serial muscular suturing is done without serial muscular dissection. Then, then EFTR of the, the inverted stomach wall is performed with a conventional needle knife, knife and then finally endoscopic mucosal suturing uh, is performed with endoscopic uh, and the loops and clips. So this method is uh, called as non-exposure simple suturing simple suturing EFTR NES EFTR. So this is order of the NES EFTR. The mucosa marking is done in, around the tumor, and the mucosa incision uh, is performed along the marking dot. And next. Uh, uh, serogel marking is done, and this step is will be told in next slide. And and then, and then the seromuscular suturing is done. Uh, is done without a seromuscular dissection. Full thickness dissection is performed by endoscopic knife inside of the stomach like this at the lateral side of marking dot. And after finishing FTR, the endoscopic suture with the multiple clippings and endoscopic loops is done. In the real cases, uh, serial marking is done uh, with the assistance of, of the pushing endoscopic knives uh, from the inside of stomach. This step is done after the step of uh, mucosal incision from inside of stomach. And then the serial muscular the suturing is done as mentioned in the previous slide. And then uh, the full thickness endoscopy resection uh, is done like this, puncturing and dissection. And, and after the finishing endoscopy resection, endoscopy suturing uh, with uh, uh, multiple clipping ends and the end loop uh, is done. This is a table that compares the news with the NAS EFTR. Operation time <coughs> was shorter in NAS EFTR, it is, uh, compared with the news technique, uh, and thus uh, seems to uh, more be, uh, be more practical. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Senorita 3 phase to clinical trial about the feasibility of NAS, NAS EFTR with a laparoscopic sentinel node uh, lymph node navigation uh, for early gas cancer is ongoing in National Cancer Center in Korea uh, from September 2018. And the primary outcome is uh, the rate of complete resection, that means uh, tumor free and blood resection. And estimated number of enrolled patients was 88, eight, and uh, only single group is assigned. <clears throat> In a preoperative stage, the tumor is identified and the mucosal marking uh, is done. <clears throat> and then, mixture of the three <clears throat> milliliter of the technetium 99 phytate and the three milliliter endocyanin in green is injected by one milliliter at uh, each of four sites around the barking dot. Uh, technetium 19 uh, phytate is a radioisotope <clears throat> used for the detection of the sentinel lymph node in breast cancer. After 30 minutes, uh, sentinel lymph nodes are detected by gamma uh, detection system, neoprof, and it is uh, dissected by basin resection. In a separate, <coughs> if the separate lymph node is uh, micrometastasis uh, positive, uh, gastrotomy with uh, D2 lymph node dissection is done. And the separate, uh, if the separate lymph node is uh, metastasis negative, 
next we have tr is top platform <clears throat> so the, uh, the inclusion criteria of this trial is a single region of the histologically confirmed adenocarcinoma and this you know, the clinical stage t1 and 0 or gas cancer uh, in the different type of cancer the size of the cancer should be uh, less than three centimeter, uh, and also in undifferentiated carcinoma type, the cancer the size should be less than three centimeter, and then the cancer should be located uh, located at least three centimeters apart from the pylorus or the cardia. Its clear criteria was the absolute indication for EMR or ESD. So the next step of this trial uh, is a multi-center trial. Now the, our team is planning the, the feasibility pilot study about this method and to attend the multi-center trial. So this slide shows the suggested proper selection of patient recommended for the FTR with the sentinel load navigation. The tumor has to have the definite margin and the EGC with the suspected of deep submuxal invasion and less than 5 cm in diameter uh, could be considered. And the anterior wall over the great curve side is a, a easy side to perform. And origas cancer located in cardia and this area of antrum less than the 3 cm from the pyloric ring uh, it has to be circumvented. So now I conclude uh, my presentation. So uh, endoscopic full sequence resection is a promising and reasonable method for the treatment of the uh, early gas cancer, uh, which could secure adequate oncological safety and improve the quality of life. Uh, the feasibility of sentinel lymph node navigation surgery, uh, uh, surgery uh, with the help of radioisotope and its detector uh, has been demonstrated in early gas cancer by recent study. However, for the large scale uh, prospective and comparative studies uh, between the EFTR and the conventional surgical treatment, the long term uh, follow up measure uh, should be uh, performed in a multi center uh, trial settings. So, thank you for your attention. Yeah. Okay, thank you for speakers. I'm uh, Professor uh, Kyo Young Song from Catholic University of Korea. Uh, as you know, we have uh, four uh, distinguished speakers. Okay, thank you for speakers. I'm uh, Professor Kyo Young Song from Catholic University of Korea. Um, uh, as you know, we have uh, four uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, Professor Kim and Professor Lim, uh, unfortunately, are not here. Um, and we have uh, two speakers, Professor Chong and Professor Om. Um. Uh, Professor Kim and Professor Lim, uh, unfortunately, are not here. And we have uh, two speakers, Professor Chong and Professor Om. Um. Okay, so uh, all uh, audience can have a, a chance to ask two speakers. And uh, uh, we also have a, a, a chairperson, Professor Min. Professor Min. Do you have any questions or comments, please? Yeah, thank you. Professor Song, uh, let me ask one question on the list and the live virtual conference live question. And uh, actually, one of the audience asked to Professor Songyo Lim, who is the fourth speaker, but actually, sadly to say, he could not attend at the live 
time. So uh, I want to ask two, two presenters, the second presenter, Professor Chang Zhang, and the third presenter, Dr. Bang Wong. And the question is, the, who performed endoscopic procedures during the actual operations? Endoscopists or surgeons? And Professor Zhang, could you answer this question? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, in Korea, uh, it is uh, not uh, permit uh, uh, endoscopist uh, fee in operation room. So not easy to uh, performing uh, op uh, endoscopic procedure in operation same time. So mostly uh, just uh, endoscopic guide is uh, performed by surgeon. And uh, or myself or my colleague. Yeah, thank you, Professor John. Uh, how about Dr. Ong? Could yes. you answer? Ah uh, yes, in my in our next procedure, Professor Chang Kyu Kim, he, who is the endoscopist, performed the all endoscopic procedure in operating room. Yeah, thank you for your answers. Uh, Professor Song, do you have any question to the presenters? Professor Zhang, do you yeah. comment the uh, procedure that uh, you do in the real practice nowadays? Can you comment? Yeah. Uh, I previous comment in the not easy to uh, endoscopist is uh, uh, pro uh, procedure in the same time. So mostly I try to uh, endoscopy procedure is myself. So uh, I, I uh, mostly just the endoscopic guide and laparoscopic procedure is first. So I recommend uh, is uh, not need to expert the uh, uh, endoscopist is need the procedure is recommended because so if I uh, intragastric uh, endophytic mass, uh, actually uh, I did not perform it in malignant tumor in uh, Lex procedure and just I do a benign tumor only uh, do that. And uh, in, if the mass is a uh, endophytic mass, I usually try to uh, relax or transgastric resection or uh, single incision intragastric resection is uh, the first choice. And if the exophyte just is to uh, uh, expite mass, I try just endoscopic guide, just laparoscopic lecture section, or uh, sometimes I uh, net, uh, clean net, a uh, similar clean net procedure is uh, uh, one of the choice. Yeah. That's my uh, procedure. Okay, thank you. Mm, any other comments? Uh, Professor Min? Audio, please. Yeah, thank you. And let me ask one question to Dr. Ong. Yes. Uh, two questions. And I wonder the adequate resection margin for lax procedures to perform the malignant surgery. And did you always perform frozen section biopsy to check the Resection margin during surgery, and yeah. how about the adequate length of the resection margin for EVC? Uh, thank you for your important question. Uh, in in this next trial, uh, we checked all the four direction margin in operative room, so that's why this uh, procedure takes long time. So uh, initially. Uh, 
all the margin positive case, there were three cases among the 18. Uh, they are mostly the uh, signaling links that were undifferentiated type cancer. So actually we do the just uh, five, uh, uh, 0.5 or 1 cm margin initially, but we found that uh, it is not enough uh, in uh, initial uh, trial. So uh, now uh, we changed the margin when the in case of the undifferentiated uh, type, we, uh, we uh, uh, examined the margin more than 1 cm. So after that, we have no uh, margin positive case in second period. Yeah, thank you. And another question is the uh, experience of the reoperation after next procedures in your experiments. Uh, so far, there was no uh, reoperation case, mm. fortunately. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ram. Yeah. And Professor Song, would you proceed? Yeah. Uh, we got uh, another question from audience. You routinely do uh, endoscopic ultrasound for all the guys cancer before Lex. Both of speakers can answer. You routinely do you EUS for EGC before Lex. Dr. Zhang? Yeah. In our center, in uh the early gastric cancer try to uh, routinely performing uh, e EUS in, uh, in, their, in their department. So mostly we perform the EUS and actually we are not uh, uh, routinely perform the last procedure. We sometimes uh, previously, we, I think it should be uh, performing e EUS because uh, diagnosis is very important in the early especially in nuclear cancer, it should be. So US is uh, important, I think. How about Dr. Om? Please, audio on, please. Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, we don't uh, perform the US routinely. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, it is needed uh, by the uh, endoscopist decision, we perform the US. And Dr. Ong, uh, one of the audience questions about the, your additional procedure for experience margin positive in your Palo study. Did you perform the real resection or subtotal gastrectomy or and so on? Uh, yes, uh, we have three positive margin cases. Uh, we performed uh, additional ESD in endoscopically at that time. Uh, they there was a uh, frozen positive, so we uh, do the additional uh, ESD. So after the ESD, we get the we got the uh, negative margin. Did you always perform the uh, first section biopsy during ESD? Is it possible in clinical setting? Ah uh, yeah, uh, usually uh, the ESD margin is not. Uh, uh, yeah, in in operating room we perform the additional uh, tissue uh, resected the tissue we uh, delivered all the tissue to pathological part. So uh, yeah, it is very special cases. Yeah, very special yeah, institution. <laughs> you should be so happy about that. Yeah. And Dr. Song, would you wrap up this session? Okay. Yeah. It's the end of the question. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this area is very special and uh, uh, very important in the uh, future technology, I guess. Uh, we surgeons uh, should have uh, focus on this issue because all of uh, all gas cancer treatment could be done in the very minimally approach. So this is very important point. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks to all speakers uh, and participants. Uh, we will close this session uh, and we'll have a, a coffee break for 20 minutes. And the uh, next session uh, will be open at uh, 9.50 a.m.
and the next session will be an open ceremony. So please check in as possible. Thank you all. 감사합니다. Thank you.